Hollywood's most famous movie stars leave the film capital to help the government sell war bonds. Irene Dunn, Ronald Coleman, Hedy Lamarr, Greer Garson, all part of a contingent of some 50 screen celebrities giving their time and talents to aid the national war effort. The country has asked the people to invest a billion dollars in one month to help pay for the war. And here's the start of the drive. Boarding a special train for Washington, they'll tour 300 cities from coast to coast. Go to any city that agrees to subscribe at least $1 million. Yes, in democratic America, everybody is doing his bit. There goes Jimmy Stewart on his way to enlist. One of the most popular stars on the screen. Joining the Air Force as a private, Jimmy has now won promotion. Today, he's Lieutenant Stewart, USA. That husky young Negro, en route to an Army induction center, is the heavyweight boxing champion of the world, Joe Lewis, the boy who beat Max Schmeling. The Army can use that fighting spirit, and Joe Lewis is now a corporal of cavalry, somewhere in the West. From all walks of life, even from the nation's highest tribunal, a Supreme Court Justice, Lieutenant Colonel Frank Murphy, answers his country's call. A veteran of the last war, he saw service overseas. Back in uniform, the judge is again ready for duty at the front. Moviegoers of years ago will remember Jackie Coogan. Charlie Chaplin made him famous as the kid. Well, Jackie's in the Air Force now, a staff sergeant and qualified glider pilot. A movie star of modern times is sworn into service. Tyrone Power, hero of many a daring exploit on the silver screens of the world. He'll now play his greatest role as a leatherneck marine. Somewhere in Egypt, President Roosevelt's eldest son, James, sees war as a major of marines. Today, that experience stands him in good stead. For communiques report, Major James Roosevelt is with the marines battling in the South Pacific. Franklin Roosevelt, Jr. is in uniform. His fellow officer is Douglas Fairbanks, Jr., a lieutenant in the Navy. Young Doug, like his famous father, every inch a man, is serving with the fleet. Clark Gable, at 41, renounces his throne as America's most popular film star to join the United States Army Air Force. Enlisting as a private, his ambition to become a crack aerial gunner in the crew of a bomber. The only son of General John J. Pershing wins his promotion from private to second lieutenant. The Army's Chief of Staff, General Marshall, personally awarding the commission. A general son, up from the ranks. Yes, movie stars arriving in Washington to help sell war bonds are all working for the same cause. The parade down Pennsylvania Avenue is a pageant of patriotism. Bing Crosby in a scout car. Jimmy Cagney. Abbott and Costello, popular comedians of stage, screen, and radio. They all assemble on the Treasury steps to launch the drive for funds. Greer Garson, Jimmy Cagney, Ann Rutherford, Irene Dunn, Hedy Lamarr. And how that crowd lines up to buy bonds from their favorites. They buy knowing that every dollar invested helps send more planes, tanks, and ships to the United Nations. This is the people's way of saying, from the home front to the battlefront, from movie stars to sales clerks, America's 130 million citizens are in the war. Typical of the speed with which great American industrial plants have been converted to war is this arms factory somewhere in Midwestern United States. A year ago, these girls made automobile tires. Today, they inspect some of the 1,500 precision parts that go into the making of Bofors and the aircraft guns. From sub-assembly lines, workmen once skilled in production for peace are now breaking records manufacturing weapons for war. U.S. improvements in construction have reduced costs 25%. Welded parts have taken the place of rivets. The time to produce each unit has been cut by nearly a third. Flexible to handle, the 40 millimeter mobile Bofors can fire from any angle, from vertical to horizontal. Its barrel moves fast enough to follow a plane diving 500 miles an hour. Leaving the
factory for shipment to United Nations battlefronts halfway around the world. The completed gun, credited with being the most effective weapon in the defense of London during the 1940 Battle of Britain, is now rolling from U.S. assembly lines at the rate of thousands every month. In the field, they're ready for action in less than a minute. Wings over England, but these are wings of the RAF, American-built bombers outward bound for daylight raids upon the continent. Raids to repay the Nazis tenfold for their wanton attacks upon defenseless cities. Crossing the channel, low flying makes it harder for enemy observers and sound detectors to spot them. Roaring in over the beaches, movie camera planted squarely in the nose of a bomber for a ringside seat in an actual raid upon Nazi-occupied France. Only complete mastery of the air makes possible these daring daylight forays. Interested only in military objectives, they wing on to a chemical plant making Nazi munitions, and the bombardiers lay their deadly eggs. Over channel ports now, blasting docks and installations with thousand pound bombs. And the camera records the damage. Back at a base in England, night raiders get their orders. They climb into fur lined clothing. This time, the goal is Nazi Germany. The schedule of attack 24 hour a day bombings around the clock. They carry feathered passengers, a homing pigeon for every bomber to be released only if a ship gets into trouble. Sundown, the zero hour. Powerful squadrons of 30-ton Lancasters are ready. Americans are among the crews going with veterans of the RAF. At dozens of widely scattered aerodromes, blinker lights flash the signal for takeoff. And one by one, with split-second timing, a thousand bombers roar down the runways, bound for the industrial cities of the German Reich. visible through the haze, flying high above night clouds, they speed upon their deadly mission. Now, over the blacked out objective, parachute flares light up the target amid a hail of anti-aircraft fire. Started by incendiaries, flame like beacons. The city is ablaze. Yeah.